Hello, this Bible study is going to be on Adam and what he looked like, and why does the world hate the white race? Well, you've got the black Hebrews that are saying that the world will not be a good place to live until the last white person's dead. You've got Louis Farrakhan, the black nation of Islam. He basically says the same thing, kill all the whites. You had Nelson Mandela, who was the uh, African National Congress. It was a communist group. His favorite saying was, kill the Boer. The Boers were the white Christian Protestants that left. Um, they were Dutch, and they left and came down to South Africa. And that was his favorite saying, kill the Boer, kill the white farmer. And uh, let's see, you've got the new Black Panthers. You've got a whole bunch of Jewish rabbis and and college professors, and I tell you what, for 2% of the population, there sure are a lot of Jewish professors in universities and colleges. And a lot of them are calling for the genocide of the white race. Now, why is that? Well, the Bible has the answer. So let's take a look. But before we do that, let's take a look at what the Bible says about Pride, because if you're thinking pride, if you take pride in being white, well, you've missed the, you're missing the point. All right, let's take a look. All right, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 16 and verse 18, pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 29, 23, a man's pride shall bring him, him mm, forgive me, a man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. In 1 John we read, chapter 2, verse 16, for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. All right, turn to the book of Mark, chapter 7. And I guess um, we'll start in verse 20. Jesus speaking. And he said, That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For with them, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within and defile the man. Now, if you are one of these people running around with a a Nazi swastika and pictures of Hitler and 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 you believe in white pride and all this stuff. Well, you miss the point. But there is a reason why they hate the white race. So let's take a look. In Revelation chapter one and verse fourteen. And you know what? I show preachers this, and they absolutely deny it. I had one that said, oh, this is wrong. You know, this is the same preachers that say, well, I believe every word of the King James Bible until you show them this verse. Then it's wrong. Want to know why they hate the whites and Jesus? Revelation chapter 1 and verse 14 John gives a description of what Jesus looked like. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. 
and his eyes were as a flame of fire. So not only was his hair as white, his head was white, as white as wool, as white as snow. Do you know that the very word Adam, you know, as in Adam, the first man, it means white. Did you know that? It's the Hebrew word 119 in Strong's. Adam, to show blood in the face, i.e. to turn flush or turn rosy, be dyed, made red, ruddy, to be able to blush. Now, what group of people can blush? Um, well, the American Indians can't really blush. They're, they're red. They're about the only race that really could apply to being ruddy, besides people like the Irish. You know, they've got ruddy, ruddy complexion. Now, I'll give you that the Indians do have a ruddy complexion. And the, like the Japanese and what have you, if they drink, um, they can turn, they can turn reddish. Their, their skin will turn a little flush. But this absolutely could never apply to the black race of Africa, dark, you know, central dark Africa. Absolutely not. So, well, and then you've got Adam from Hebrew 120, and it's basically from 119, and it means ruddy. Well, we're going to look up ruddy in a minute. How about this? 1 Samuel 17 and verse 42. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. Now, who is they talking about? Goliath, right? And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. Countenance is one of those old English words. It means complexion. So he was ruddy reddish, and it had a fair complexion or fair countenance. Take a look in Webster's 1828 Dictionary and call me a liar. Look it up. Look up ruddy or countenance in 1828 Webster's Dictionary. And by the way, Webster standardized the spelling of the English in the American language. You know, British English and American English is a little different. Color, C-O-L-O-R, in English, American style. But in England, it's C-O-L-O-U-R. You know, they got a funny way of spelling things, right? Center, C-E-N-T-E-R, in Engl uh, American English. In England, it's C-E-N-T-R-E. -E. I've seen... Um, English publications from 100 years ago where they spelled tire, T-Y-R-E. You know, like a car tire, we would spell it T-I-R-E. So, you know, those those Brits, they, they just don't know how to spell. What can I tell you? But Webster, he was a linguist, okay? A linguist is a Bible scholar. That's somebody that's like got a double PhD in, in languages, okay? It's one thing to know one language. But this guy was a scholar. I mean, he knew Hebrew. He knew Greek. The Hebrew was the Old Testament language. Greek was the New Testament language. He knew Latin, which 20 to 25 percent of English language comes from Latin. He knew Spanish, Italian, German. I mean, you, you could talk to him about a word. He could tell you wh where it came from and everything. I mean, the guy was just I mean, he, he, he's the one that wrote the dictionary, Webster's Dictionary. This guy knew the Bible also. He was a Christian. And let me tell you something. When you look up Bible theological words like ordination, propitiation, uh, sanctification, those kind of words, his Bible, de his definitions come from the Bible. I mean, and he'll even, he even quotes scripture in the 1828 dictionary to give you a sense of what the word means. 
His Bible theological words come right from the Bible, and they're, they're spot on. They're on the money. They're perfect, as far as I can tell. Um, but what do I know? I only have a master's degree in the Bible, so I'm just an idiot, right? Okay, Ruddy from 1828 Dictionary. Webster's Ruddy. Having a healthy reddish color, a ruddy complexion, i.e. rosy red blush as in the Irish, are ruddy. Okay? In the Song of Solomon, okay, Solomon, chapter 5 and verse 10 in the Bible. My beloved is white. White. And ruddy, the chiefest among ten thousands. I'm sorry, the chiefest among ten thousand. Book of Lamentations. Jeremiah wrote Lamentations. Verse four, uh, chapter four and verse seven. Her Nazarites. Okay, the Nazarites, remember Samson, he was a Nazarite. Jesus was called a Nazarene. I've had people tell me that Nazarites and Nazarenes are not the same. I don't know. But wasn't Jesus called a uh, Jesus of Nazareth? Well, what do you think the Nazarites were? They were Nazarene, you know, they were from Nazareth. Her Nazarites were pure, purer than snow. What color is snow? They were whiter than milk. Um, we're not talking about chocolate milk. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. What color is rubies? And if you've got a white complexion and you stay out on the beach too long in the sun, what color does your body turn? Her Nazarites were purer than snow. They were whiter than milk. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. Their polishing was of sapphire. So, was Adam the first white man? Were the Hebrews white? Can any dark race blush or show blood in the face? Well, the Japanese can if they drink wine or, you know, liquor. Um, why do they want all this unlimited third world immigration into the USA and Europe? Now, I ask you a question. Who printed the Bibles? Uh, people from Europe and the United States. Did they print them in China? Well, they print them in China now, but they, you know, they, they, uh, they wouldn't be printing the Bibles if, uh, if they weren't doing it for a Western company, you know. I was buying pocket Bibles from uh, the dollar store, and yeah, they're printed in China, but I mean, they're not printing Bibles in China to, to give to their people. No, they're printing them for a company to make a profit from. So who printed the Bibles? Uh, let's see. You ever wonder why they hate Germany? Well, guess who invented the printing press? A guy named Gutenberg. German. Yeah. What was the first book he printed? The Bible. Who built all the churches? Uh, Europe. America. Africa? No. Asia? No. No. So, you know, that, uh, that makes you wonder, you know? Now, let me ask you a question. Why do they want all this third world immigration? I think the answer is found in Ezra chapter 9 and verse 2. They came back from Babylon. They had intermarried with the heathens of the land. And this is what they had to say. Ezra 9, 2. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed, holy, H-O-L-Y, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers have been chief in this trespass. Now, if there's holy seed, isn't there unholy seed? Wouldn't there be unholy seed if there's holy seed? 
Uh, seems like there would be, right? Now, let's take a look at something. Now, I have an entire playlist on my web, uh, my YouTube channel, which I don't think is going to be around too long. Uh, Obama signed some legislation about fake news, and Trump hasn't been sworn in yet. I don't have high hopes for Trump. Um, I certainly think, well, I certainly believe that Hillary would have been worse pretty sad when you got to pick the two lesser of two evils, you know. I'm hoping Trump gets rid of some of the stuff that Obama did, but right now I don't have a lot of confidence. We'll see what happens. But um, Obama signed some legislation that basically did away with freedom of speech. And uh, what I'm teaching is going to be considered hate speech before too long. Matter of fact, um, the words of Jesus in the New Testament. You go to the Israeli state that the churches just fawn and fall over. Well, guess what? That's hate speech over there. Oh, yeah. Jesus, the most anti-Semitic person that ever lived, according to the Jewish Encyclopedia. Of course, they don't call him Jesus. They call him Yeshu. Y-E-S-H-U. All right, let's take a look at... Uh, Isaac. All right, but my point was, I have an entire playlist on God's covenant promises to Abraham. Now, Abraham was a direct descendant of Adam. And, you know, Adam goes through the line, and then he had Noah, and then, you know, they go through the line, and then you had, God actually talked and considered Abraham a friend. I mean, how's that for a witness? You know, God talked to Abraham. I mean, face to face. And then Abraham had two sons, Ishmael, which is generally the father of the Arabs, acknowledged as. But he was not to be the chosen seed. The chosen seed was to be an Isaac. And then Isaac had two sons, Esau, who is called Edom, and Jacob. From what I understand, they were twins. And the black Hebrews will love to tell you, well, Esau means red. And they'll say, see, you white people are Esau. Well, you know, that's the thing. If you have two white parents and you have twins, guess what? If one's white, so's the other. That's just the way it is, people. You know, and if Esau was red, well, that's because white skin shows blood. Unless, of course, he was an American Indian. Which I kind of find unlikely. I don't see American Indians running around in the Middle East. What do you think? Was he Geronimo? Sitting Bull? Ah, I don't know. All right, let's take a look at Isaac. Now, another thing, too. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob did not want their kids marrying into the lines of the Canaanites. And if you want to know why, I've got an entire playlist on the sons of God. Take a look at Job 38. The sons of God. Um shouted for joy when the earth was created? What day after the earth was created was Adam created? Okay, the earth was created and then six days later Adam came, was formed of the dust of the earth. What day were the angels created? When you can answer those questions, you'll know who the sons of God were in the Old Testament. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at Isaac. All right, let's go to Genesis chapter 24, verse 1. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had, Put, I pray thee, 
my hand under my thigh. And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell. But thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. You know, kindred, kin, kinfolk, relatives, you know, go to my people and get a wife for my kid. Not the Canaanites. All right. So, let's keep going. We're going to skip around a little bit. All right, so the servant goes to Abraham's country. And then in um, verse 15. And it came to pass before he had done speaking that, behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair to look upon. Ooh, fair. What does that mean? Uh, are American Indians re uh, fair? No. Are the Chinese red? No. I mean, fair? No. Are the Africans fair? No, absolutely not. Remember Snow White? Mirror, mirror on the wall. You know, the Wicked Witch. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? Fair means white people. Okay. And the damsel was very fair to look upon. A virgin. Neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. So, let's take a look at who her family is. So, obviously, you know, she was the um, from Abraham's brother's family, okay? So, if she was fair and she's from Abraham's family and, I mean, come on, you know? Now, her name was Rebecca. Uh, we're going to go to verse 29. And Rebecca had a brother, and his name was Laban. And Laban ran out unto the man, unto the well. All right, so Laban is um, Rebecca's brother. Rebecca becomes Isaac's wife. He was Abraham's brother. Okay, their family. What does Laban mean? Uh, let's see. Laban. It is from the Hebrew word 3837. Laban. It means white. Wow, Laban means white. Isn't that something? Remember in Revelation 1, his head and his hairs were as white as wool, as white as snow? Hmm. Um, I looked up the word white in the Blue Letter Bible. It says it occurs 75 times in 66 verses in the Bible. Aren't there 66 books in the, in the Bible? Hmm. I think there is. And um, isn't, wasn't Adam created on the sixth day? Oh yeah, he was. And... What's the number of the beast? 666. You know. So you got Adam's created on the sixth day. 66 books in the Bible. And then the number of the beast is 666. So Satan always counterfeits what God tries to. What God, not God tries, but what God does. Interesting. In Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 8, let thy garments be always white, 
and let thy head lack no ointment. Did you ever notice in the Bible the um, clothing is going to be white? Huh, why is that? Daniel chapter 7 and verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Now, I believe this is talking about Christ, but some would argue with me. All right, go to Matthew chapter 17, verse 1. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment, raiment's clothing, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with them. White clothing. Matthew 28, verse 1. This is the crucifixion um, after. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance, his complexion, his countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow white as snow and for fear of him the keepers did shake and became as dead men and the angel answered and said unto the woman women fear not ye for i know that ye seek jesus which was crucified he is not here for he is risen as he said come and come see the place where the lord lay and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and behold, he goeth before you into Galilee, and there and uh, there shall ye see him, lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples' word. Huh. White raiment again. All right, let's read a, a parallel account of the transfiguration in Mark 9, verse 1. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here, which shall not taste of death, till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. And after six days Jesus taketh, him, taketh with him Peter and James and John, and leadeth them up into an high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. And his raiment became shining, exceeding white as snow, as no fuller on earth can white them. Mm. And there appeared unto them Elias with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. Okay, white as snow. John chapter 20, verse 12. And seeth two angels in white, sitting the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Okay. How about Revelation chapter 2 and verse 17? He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone. A white stone. And in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that received it. Revelation 3 and verse 4 and 5. Verses 4 and 5. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white. White. For they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Wow. How about Revelation 3, verse 18? 
I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed. See, that shows you right there that raiment means to be clothed. And white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not, do not appear, and anoint thy eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Revelation 4.4 4. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Hmm. Revelation 6 and 11. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Revelation 7 and verse 9. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Hmm. Skip to verse 13, Revelation 7, 13. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? White robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Revelation 14:14, 14, 14, And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat, like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. Revelation 15, verse 6. And the same seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues, plagues, clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. Huh. Revelation 19.8. I guess we're going to run out of some verses pretty soon, huh? And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Revelation 19.11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. Why a white horse? Why not a black or gray or blue or purple or pink or polka dotted? And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Verse 14. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Oh, here we go. Um, Revelation 20.11. And I saw a great white throne. Ooh. You don't want to be at the great white throne. You want to be at the judgment seat of Christ. We're not subject to you know, Christians are not subject to God's wrath. Um, and I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. So, why is, why is, you know, why, uh, why the white clothing? You know? I mean, let's face it. The word Adam, Laban, it keeps popping up. White, ruddy, fair, fair countenance, fair complexion. I mean, is it possible that we're God's chosen people? I mean, you know, in Galatians 3.29, Paul writes, And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. God made a promise to Abraham. You know, that he was going to bless him and his seed after him. 
you know, and I know people want to tell you, oh, well, you know, the Jews are God's chosen people. Well, turn to Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. Revelation 2 and verse 9. Look it up, people. Jesus speaking, I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Why can't? Why can't white Christians be God's chosen people? Why not? Why not? I mean, we're the ones that printed the Bibles. We're the ones that sent missionaries all over the world. We're the ones that built the churches, printed the Bibles. I mean, we're the ones that uplifted Jesus. Did they do it in China? No. Japan? No. Um... In Black Africa and the Congo, no. South America, no. They never even heard the name Jesus until the, the Spaniards went there. I mean, let's face it. What group of people carried the Bible and built the churches and proclaimed Jesus? Europeans. And the Europeans that came over to the Americas. Does that make us better than anybody else? Hey, I told you from the beginning, pride. If, if you're going to be lifted up in pride and go white pride and white, white pride and, and Nazi swastika on your arm and, and marching around with pictures of Hitler, you've missed the point. Name one Bible college that Hitler started. Name one time in a speech where Jesus... Uh, Jesus' name was exalted by Hitler. Never. That I know of. Never. Oh, he might have said, Oh, God be with us. Well, what God? Satanists can say that. Satanists can say, God be with us. But they're not talking about the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, and his only begotten son, Jesus, who is the Christ. They're talking about Lucifer. Satan. The devil. That's who they'd be talking about. I've got an entire playlist on Abraham. His promises that God made to him. But in Genesis 17 and verse 5, God said, Neither shall thy name be uh, any, neither shall thy name anymore be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. Do you know that word nation, nations, is the same word translated in the King James in the Old Testament as Gentiles? Sometimes they, you know, let's, let's read it translated a different way. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many Gentiles have I made thee. Well, that wouldn't have made sense, so they used the word nations. Abraham was to be a father of many nations. Um, how many Jewish nations are there? One. And it was created in 1948 by the United Nations. Not God. Okay. Where's all these many nations that God promised Abraham? Okay. Jesus said in Matthew 15:24. But he, Jesus, answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Could it be that the white Europeans are the lost sheep of the house of Israel? Why not? Why can't the white, white people be the um, children of Israel? Why not? God divorced them. God divorced Israel because they're apostasy in Israel. In uh, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 3 and verse 8. Jeremiah 3, 8. And I saw a win for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery. I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. See, God divorced Israel. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. See, Israel and Judah had wars against each other. They had different kings. 
Jerusalem was the capital of Judah, but Samaria was the capital of Israel. They're not the same. Israel was taken into captivity by the Assyrian Empire. They never returned to the land after the Assyrian Empire collapsed. According to history, they went into the Caucasus Mountains, which is uh, near Turkey. That's where they get the word Caucasian, from the Caucasus. Do you know that when Israel disappears from history, the Caucasian Europeans appear? Coincidence? I don't know. I don't think so. Galatians 3.29 And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Why do they hate the white race? Why can't white, white Christians be God's chosen people? Why not? Let's take a look at something, what Jesus said. Turn to John chapter 10, verse 23. 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. This is Hanukkah, people. Now, the Bible is just recording that it was Hanukkah. The Bible doesn't tell the Jews to, to celebrate Hanukkah, okay? Just like it doesn't tell the Christians to celebrate Christmas. They just do it. It doesn't say to do it. it they just do it. All right, so, verse 23. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice. Hmm. White Christians? My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Let's go back to verse 14. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep and have known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Hmm. See, God, Jesus came for uh, Judah first. But remember, there are tares among the wheat. So he's coming for the other sheep. Who are they? I think they're divorced Israel. Jeremiah 3.8 And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. One fold and one shepherd. Hmm. Matthew 15, 24, Jesus said, But he, Jesus, but he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Why can't white Christians be God's chosen people? Why not? Why not? You go Everywhere you go, it's always drilled in your head. Oh, it's the Jews. It's the Jews. Well, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And he told them, you know, you're not of my sheep. You don't hear my voice because you're not of my sheep. He told a certain group of them. And he also said he knew the blasphemy of those that said they were Jews, but are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. See, God's people hear God's words. But I tell you what, people, 
if we are indeed the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Jacob's name was changed to Israel, that means we're going to be the objects of Satan's wrath in the time of Jacob's trouble, which some people call the Great Tribulation. I tell you what, you better stay close to Jesus. And let me tell you something. My days on YouTube are numbered. And I, I you know, when they boot me off, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. You know, if you look for Chaplain Bob Walker on the internet, you'll, you know, you might, I might start another site or something. I don't know. But then again, I might do something different. I don't know. It's been, um, it's been fairly fruitful. I'm glad I've got thick skin for the ministry because uh, it seems like every day I'm getting called uh, horrible words, anti-Semite and racist and homophobe. And of course, they can't argue from Scripture. They have to call you names. They have to call you names. They can't argue from Scripture. Homophobe. What, what's a homophobe? A homophobe is somebody that stands by God's word and says sodomy is a, a capital offense punishable by death. It's an abomination, something that God really, 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 really hates. Oh, you're a homophobe. Uh, I tell you what, when you meet God, those sodomites, not you people, not you people that believe in Jesus, but but when the sodomites see God at the great white throne judgment, they can call him a homophobe all they want. When he casts them into the lake of fire, they can scream, homophobe! Yeah, I know. I don't have a, I don't have a big budget for uh, sound effects. Sorry. Well, people... Why is the world calling for the extermination of the white race? Maybe because we're the children of Abraham, children of Adam from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Israel. Maybe because we're the sheep of Christ. We're the ones that carried the Bible. We're the ones that built the churches. Maybe that's why. You know? Let's face it. The, uh, the Mexicans in the United States, do you know they are the direct descendants of the Aztecs who performed human sacrifices and cannibalism? The Aztec capital was built, is, was built over in what is now present-day Mexico City. One in three Mexicans lives in Mexico City. From what I understand, Mexico has a population of about 75 80 million, something like that. And Mexico City's got about 25 million people living there between the city and the suburbs. It's built on a volcano, really. You know, human sacrifice and cannibalism. The American Indians, um, they also did human sacrifices and performed cannibalism, from what I understand. The uh, Europe, why is Europe being flooded with, with Muslims? You know, it's, you know, it's just, it's unbelievable. Judgment, people. There was a time when America was full of Christians. And Europe, too. And like I say, if you ever want to wonder why the world hates Germans, Martin Luther, he stood up against the papacy, the Catholic Church. I get called a Catholic. Me, a Catholic. Right. But Martin Luther got with uh, Gutenberg, I think. Well, maybe not. I I'm not sure. All I know is Gutenberg printed Bibles. That was the books that he first printed. Martin Luther took the Greek New Testament received text, and the Hebrew, which he could read. Luther was a scholar. He knew Greek and he knew Hebrew, and he translated the Bible into German. Oh, yeah. So, 
And Germany was a very, very Christian country. I spent about a year in Germany when I was in the army, maybe a little more. Um, I don't remember ancient history. I mean, this was back during the Vietnam War, so yeah, I'm old. But the uh, in southern Germany, near uh, Stuttgart, you know, the uh, Mercedes, I think it's Mercedes, where the Mercedes are made. Or is it Porsche? I forget. Stuttgart. The um, Germans, they would greet you in the morning. They would say, Chris gut. And I had no idea what it meant, but I would return it with a smile and wave at them. You know, they were friendly people. They were nice. And I found out that meant, literally translated means Christ good or Christ is good. And that's how they used to greet me in the morning. Christ good. Christ is good. When's the last time an American or a European ever, you know, ever greeted you that way in the morning? You know, there's a reason why they hated Germany. And I don't believe 90% of the lies on the, uh, the news media, because I know who owns the news media. There's six corporations that own the news media in the, in the United States, and they own 95% of everything. Six companies, and not one of them upholds Jesus Christ. And if you think Fox Network is right-wing, you're an idiot. Fox owns HarperCollins Publishers that prints the Satanic Bible and the Joys of Gay Sex, and they also own the largest English publisher of religious books in the United States called Zondervan, which has the printing rights for the NIV, number one selling NIV Bible. Yeah. They're trying to destroy us, people. And it all started in the churches. So I'm going to do a more in-depth study on this very subject. This is kind of like the introduction, so... All right, well, why do they hate the white race? Maybe because we are the God's chosen people. And if we are, guess what? We're going to suffer in the time of Jacob's trouble. And uh, Tim LaHaye and all the other people have spread the lie of the pre-trib rapture. And boy, I tell you what, there's going to be a lot of people deny Jesus and give up their faith. What, well, their, what little faith they had. Um, when persecution comes. And it's coming, people. Persecution's going to come to America. And that's when you're going to see a real revival. And these people that are teaching that repentance is unnecessary, uh, well, I think they're wrong. That's my opinion. Jesus taught repentance. John the Baptist, who Jesus says was the greatest prophet that was ever born of a woman, he preached repentance. You know, what can I tell you? So, all right, well, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Jesus, the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Whose head and hair was as white as wool, as white as snow.